Good evening and welcome. The Ombudsman Winnie Chu today slammed the Food and Environmental Hygiene Department for ineffective rodent control measures. She also urged the Civil Aviation Department to beef up the regulation of paragliding activities. Timothy Lee has details. The Office of the Ombudsman initiated an investigation into rodent controls, with growing voices saying such efforts are not effective. The investigation shows that some frontline workers from the Food and Environmental Hygiene Department failed to punch holes in rat poison packages as baits to release the smell to attract rodents. A contractor explained rodents can open the packages on their own. The investigation also shows that there are refuse and seafood residues outside wet markets. But up until last November, only 51 verbal warnings have been issued to tenants concerned. We recommend that FEHD conduct intensive surprise inspections and strictly enforce the tenancy terms. As a further step, the department should consider involving, invoking applicable legislation for enforcement to urge tenants to properly clean their stalls and surrounding areas. The Ombudsman also urged the authorities to improve its methodology in conducting rodent infestation surveys, as the results generated may not be accurate. Meanwhile, with paragliding activities getting more popular in Hong Kong, there has also been an increase in related casualties. The investigation by the Office of the Ombudsman found that there is no specific legislation regulating such activities in town. But the Civil Aviation Department had only conducted a review of the regulations as late as 2018. The Ombudsman added that in paragliding incidents, unless the pilot concern rendered cooperation, authorities can hardly confirm the identity of the pilot in most cases. CAD should require participants of local paragliding activities to make real name registration in advance. Paragliding pilots should be required to register their paragliding equipment and display the registration number conspicuously on their equipment or gear. The Civil Aviation Department has thanked the Ombudsman's suggestions, adding it will discuss with policy bureaus about setting up regulations. Timothy Lee, TVB News. Hong Kong reported 251 new COVID infections, including 36 imported cases. Meanwhile, health authorities say they have identified one more local case involving the Omicron BA2 subvariant. Christy Khan reports. Health authorities today said a 99-year-old woman who lives in Richland Gardens in Kowloon Bay is confirmed to have come down with the mutated Omicron variant. According to the health officials, the woman carrying the Omicron BA.2.12.1 strain had received one COVID jab. Her domestic helper's rapid antigen test also showed a positive result for the virus on Monday. It's not clear yet whether she has the variant. Authorities said they didn't rule out the possibility that the 99-year-old woman might have come into contact with a 76-year-old patient also living in Richland Gardens who had previously visited the Thai Cushing McDonald's. They are five uh, stories apart. They are living in the same block from the genome sequencing. The results are the same. So we believe that the 99-year-old male probably was infected uh, from the environment of the block. The health authorities also suspect that four of the newly reported COVID cases may be linked to the same 76-year-old woman. That's because she had also been to the exhibition center station and an eatery in Wan Chai during her incubation period. Assuming that these four cases are BA.2.12.1 and the whole C genome sequencing matches with uh, that of the uh, McDonald cluster, then it would prove that this cluster uh, has already transmitted uh, cases into the community. Furthermore, health officials said two more COVID infections were reported in the St. Catherine's kindergarten in Kowloon Tong. One of the patients is a student from the morning class who shared the same classroom with the previous cases. An other case involves a student from a different class. Meanwhile, the hospital authority reported two more deaths, bringing the city's fifth wave death to 9,161. Christy Khan, TVB News. More cases of monkeypox are being reported worldwide. Hong Kong, however, has yet to see any infections. The symptoms of monkeypox are similar to smallpox. 
albeit milder, with those infected recovering after around three weeks. As smallpox was successfully eradicated through the use of vaccines, experts believe the smallpox vaccine is 85 percent effective against monkeypox. They noted as the two viruses belong to the same family, the injection of the smallpox vaccine can stimulate antibodies to protect against its counterpart. Although smallpox had been eliminated in the 1980s, vaccines for the virus are still available for purchase from a number of pharmaceutical companies. Cathay Pacific Airways has reached out to hundreds of previously laid off cabin crew members and will consider rehiring them. Some 8,000 employees have been let go by the city's flagship carrier during the pandemic. In an email sent out to its former employees, the airline said recent adjustments and travel restrictions will help support the resumption of flights to and from Hong Kong. Cathay added it is the right time for us to begin rebuilding our team and attached an application link. Still, it's believed the rehired staff members will be paid under a new mechanism. That means cabin service managers could be paid at most $33,000 each month. Experts say the move may not work in the airline's favor, as many of its former employees could have pursued other careers over the past two years. Foreign Minister Wang Yi and a 20-person delegation arrived in the Solomon Islands today to begin an eight-nation diplomatic tour of the Pacific. This as Australia scrambles to counter the move by sending its own foreign minister to Fiji to shore up support in the Pacific. Daniel Rao reports. Foreign Minister Wang Yi will visit the Solomon Islands, Kiribati, Samoa, Fiji, Tonga, Vanuatu, Papua New Guinea and East Timor over the course of his 10-day trip. Wang is reportedly hoping to broker a deal covering security, fisheries and more with the countries during his tour. Any such agreement is likely to be announced as part of a joint communique in Fiji on May 30th. China is seeking to strengthen economic and political ties in the Pacific, a region that has traditionally had close relations with the US and Australia. China signed a security pact with the Solomon Islands last month. That sparked concerns in Washington and Canberra that Beijing could establish a military base in the country, which is geographically close to Australia. However, both China and the Solomon Islands have stated that there are no plans for a base. Australia has sent its new foreign minister Penny Wong to Fiji as one kicks off his tour in the Solomon Islands. Newly elected Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese said Wong's presence aims to respond at what he said was China's bid to increase its influence in the Pacific. Uh, we need to, to respond to this. Uh, because this is uh, China seeking to increase its influence in the region of the world where Australia has been the security partner of choice since the Second World War. With regard to the Pacific trip, Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesperson Wang Wenbin had earlier said that developing friendly and cooperative relations with the relevant countries is in the fundamental and long-term interests of both sides. He stated Wang Yi's tour will help promote peace, stability and prosperity in the Asia-Pacific region. Daniel Rao, TVB News. Philippine President-elect Ferdinand Marcos Jr. is promising to prevent foreign interference in the country. He said he will resist challenges from Beijing and stick to a 2016 ruling of an international arbitration court that made clear the Philippines' economic entitlements. We have a, a very important, uh, very important uh, ruling in our favor, and uh, we will, we will use it to uh, continue to assert what are to assert our territorial rights. It's not a claim; it is already our territorial right. We will not allow a single square, and we even make it smaller, a single square millimeter of our, uh, of our uh, maritime uh, coastal and uh, up to we are 200 kilometers and we have rights to be, to be trampled upon. We're talking about China. And how do we do that? We talk to China cons consistently um, with a firm voice. Marcos was proclaimed the next president of the Philippines by a joint session of Congress yesterday. Earlier this month, he won a landslide election victory 36 years after his dictator father was ousted in a pro-democracy uprising.
The Hong Kong General Chamber of Commerce says the pay trend survey results don't reflect the current economic climate. This, as the pay trend committee recommended a 7% salary hike for senior civil servants, a move that the business chamber is slamming as out of touch with reality and possibly leading to a ripple effect across the city. Jackie Lin reports. On Wednesday, the Pay Trend Survey Committee confirmed this recommendation of pay hikes for civil servants, ranging from 2.04 to 7.26 percent. That raised eyebrows among two executive council members and some human resources consultants. The latest to join the chorus of concern, the Hong Kong General Chamber of Commerce. In a statement, the chamber says the Pay Trend Committee's year-long survey was conducted in April last year. At the time, the city had largely put a lid on the pandemic, and companies were optimistic about returning to normal. But since the fifth wave of outbreaks hit, businesses have been stymied by a raft of social distancing measures. As many companies are still struggling to get back to their feet, and local economy recorded a contraction of 4 percent in the first quarter, the chamber says the proposed salary hikes are divorced from reality. Also highlighted is the outflow of talent from Hong Kong, which has caused manpower shortages in many sectors. The chamber says businesses could have a hard time retaining staff as they struggle to match up to the government's pay scale. That could in turn precipitate a ripple effect in Hong Kong's labor market. Still, Feng Chun Chong, chairman of the Hong Kong Civil Servants General Union, defends the committee's proposal. Speaking in a radio program today, he said the public perception could be subjective and the pay trans calculation mechanism should be respected. Jacqueline TV News. That's the news. Thanks for watching. Good night.